What is going on guys? It is Brew here with South Coast Fabrication and Outdoors. Coming at you with a little tackle overview today. Uh, spring's here in South Mississippi and I'm ready to get out on the salty seas. Yeah, that's right, I'm ready to uh, got to get my boat in shape a little bit, clean it up. I uh, got to put a new bilge pump in it, but we're not doing that today. Today, I'm going to give you a rundown of the tackle I take out whenever I'm targeting those redfish, speckled trout, and flounder that we love to fish down here in South Mississippi. So y'all come along. I'll show you what I take out there, show you what my favorite rigs are, the different lures and whatnot, and uh, hopefully you can learn something. Uh, just real quick, if you guys like these videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button also, that thumbs up down there. Leave me some comments. Uh, question of the day is, what's your favorite rig for speckled trout, redfish, and flounder? It could be one rig for all three of them, or three different rigs. It's up to you. Just let me know what your favorite rigs are, uh, and I'll show you mine. First thing, you gotta have your knife, little bait knife, nothing fancy, just a little Dexter uh, stainless steel blade. Um, always keep that in the tackle box for cutting line, cutting bait, anything like that. Also, a pair of pliers. These are fishing pliers. They got a spot in there. You cut line, you can pull hooks out with the end there. And then in there they got uh, some crimping dies for doing uh, barrel crimps on leaders and such. All right, so we'll start off with the terminal tackle. In this box, I keep mainly terminal tackle. I got some big old circle hooks, and some uh, big straight shank hooks. I use those for um, big bull reds, big old redfish, uh, sharks if we're trying to catch sharks anything like that. We usually put cut bait or live bait on those. Got these red circle hooks. I usually rig those up with if I'm doing uh, live bait or uh, shrimp. If I'm doing live shrimp I'll go ahead and rig one of those up with a popping cork. Rig it however deep. Uh, it sort of depends on what kind of depth of water we're fishing. I'll we'll rig that up uh, for putting shrimp on there live bait. Um, another way we rig up, which this is more for the big boys, we'll take that hard leader line. I don't know if you can see it. So that's a leader wire basically. Put a loop in one end that we tie on to. And then usually I put one of these bigger single weights on there, but I was a uh, Whenever I made this leader, I did not have uh, the bigger weights, so we'll uh, put weights, a couple beads on there to keep the weights from getting stuck on the uh, ends of the leader, and then a hook, and on that we'll put, I mean, it depends on uh, what they're hitting on, but um, break crabs in half for some big bull reds, and uh, do cut bait, mullet, um, croaker sort of stuff like that and you can even put live bait on there some of those bigger croaker uh, just different stuff like that uh, so I've got some smaller hooks we'll put cut bait or shrimp or even live croaker on those uh, getting into the school trout stuff like that the beads some swivels uh, also keep a couple spoons in there like tossing those spoons out. These are these are kind of dirty. Um, need to sort of polish them up a little bit so they shine. But it's always good to have a spoon to sling on out there. I've caught freaking everything on spoons. Also got some shrimps, some shrimpy shrimps. We'll put these underneath a popping cork. Also, I tell you what, down here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, that popping cork is key. I put. I fish with a popping cork pretty much 85% of the time. So it's a voodoo shrimp, some different DOA shrimp. Um, 
I've never really noticed catching more on the voodoo shrimp than I have on the DOA. So usually I stick with those DOAs. The voodoo shrimp are pretty pricey. Uh, it's a, they, they cost enough to where it hurts whenever you lose one. Those DOA are a little bit more cost effective. So that's the terminal tackle box. Set that aside. Now this is the money maker here. I catch more fish on a popping cork and soft plastics than I do anything else. So in here, keep some jig heads, which I need to get some more. And then all my soft plastics, we got split tail beetles, various colors, sparkle beetles. Uh, it's sort of like a little kakaho swim bait sort of deal. I think this is actually called the kakaho. The, the manufacturer calls those kakahos. Like kakaho minnow on a jig head. It's old electric chicken soft bait. Electric chicken's a good color. It's that green on top, pink on the bottom. Also fun to say. Then... These are really good. I like these a lot. I think this is the Matrix Shad. Caught a good many fish on the old Matrix Shad. And then these two are a couple different colors of the, uh, these, I call these down south lures, uh, soft plastics. And really with all these fish I'm on a jig head and either under a popping cork or just by themselves. And they do good. I mean, I've caught, catch probably most of my fish on soft plastic under a popping cork. So that's pretty much the soft plastics that I use. I need to re-up on some stuff. Uh, one of my favorite colors is the purple and white. And I, I ran out of them this season. Um, I need to get some more of those black and white ones also. And then the... Uh, it started out as chartreuse and orange, but it's so old it's faded and whatnot. So I got to re up on those. Um, I brought my two reels to my cousin's shop. Uh, he has a tackle shop in Pascrishan, Mississippi. It's called uh, Brush Island Outfitters. So if y'all need any tackle, go check out Brush Island Outfitters uh, in Pascrishan, Mississippi. They can get you set up. Uh, my cousin Matt who owns the store he's actually a charter captain also so pretty much everything they have in the store is what they use on their charters and they do really good he stays so busy um, it, it's hard for me to even get him on the phone to pick his brain these days but if y'all need y'all want to come down to the Mississippi Gulf Coast do a little fishing charter Y'all check out Shore Thing Charters. I'll put the uh, link in the description to their Facebook page so you can go check them out. Alright, so this is my hard plastic box. Mostly topwater stuff. Pretty much everything on this outer on the outer pockets is all top waters. We've got top dogs of different colors. It's a Papa Dog. I got three three of those. It's got that lip on it to where it gives you a nice splash whenever you're jerking it along. It's called a Papa Dog. We got Top Dog Juniors. A little bit smaller than the full size Top Dog. So we'll compare them all. So that's a full size Top Dog. It's a Top Dog Junior. And then you got the top pup so three different sizes all top water lures uh, I also keep these mirror lure mirror dines in there they, uh, they're pretty good especially when you get into like a school of bait fish that the trout are hitting on from the bottom side they a lot of times they won't come up and hit the top hit the top water stuff so that's a little suspended uh, suspended bait so as you're cranking it in, it stays a little bit below the water. Allows you to get that sort of mid-water uh, bite. So that's pretty much it on that. That's all my hard plastics. 
I got one more box in there that I'm not going to go into because it's all, it's all stuff that I don't actually use around here. Um, but one thing I want to do is rig up a couple of these popping corks. Alright, so I got my two popping corks. Big key, guys. Get the popping cork with that weight on it. That'll keep it whenever you're casting out. If you're in, uh, if you got a light bait on there, like a just a hook with a shrimp or something on it, it'll make that cork fall back down vertical like it's supposed to be so you can pop it. Um, I have some corks that don't have that weight on it, and they'll just sit there and float sideways, and then you jerk it whenever you're working it back in, and it'll twist on you and get all snagged up and it doesn't work right. So make sure you get the popping cork with the weight on it. All right, so take the old pliers. Get that little bit of line that's left on there off. All right, so what we'll do is take one end of our 50 pound test Right there on the bottom side of the popping cork. don't know if that knot has an actual name I've always just called it the fisherman's knot it's how I was taught to tie off tie this other one on the fisherman's knot you go through and then you twist it on up maybe eight to ten twist and then there's that small hole loop in the line. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. There's a small loop in the line where that twist starts. You put your loose end through that hole. And then you pull it. And then you end up with this bigger loop. That bigger loop that's made from you doing you pulling that free end through there you put three free end back through that bigger loop and then you tighten her on down there's probably videos out there on the YouTube doing a much better job at explaining that and showing you how to do it than what I just did so usually, most of the spots I fish, I'll start off with about 18 inches of line. Give yourself a little bit more to make your knot. You just tie the same knot with the jig head that I do on the bottom of the cork. Now 50 pound test on a liter is probably a little excessive. You probably don't need that much, honestly. Cut this tail off a little shorter. And you're good to go on that. But yeah, you probably don't need 50 pound test on your liter line, honestly. But I usually fish these probably longer than I should before replacing the leader and we fish around a lot of pilings and oyster piles and stuff like that so I like to bulk it up a little bit because it it'll get some rubbing on there and thin it out so all right same deal on the hook about 18 inches a leader that fisherman's knot
Try not to hook yourself. Cut your tail off. And you're good to go. So these will be my two go-to rigs most of the time. Popping cork with a, a jig head and a soft plastic, and then popping cork with the hook on there for doing shrimp, live croaker, cut bait, sort of anything like that. That popping cork gives you some little top water action when you're working it in, and then it sort of looks like you got a top water bait and it's uh, got a trailer on it, which it, it seems to work well around here. I'm not sure what it is, but trout and redfish usually hit it up. One thing I like doing with the tying that jig head on there is all of my baits, all my soft plastics use the same size jig head. So if I feel like they're going to be hitting on one color and not another, all I got to do is pull that soft plastic off, put another one on the same jig head. Don't even have to retie anything, which is nice. Um, keeps you in the action. You don't have to sit there and retie. I know a lot of guys especially a lot of these guys on YouTube who are doing this more for a living and especially all the charter guys uh, they have four, five, six rods all tied with something different they have something different tied on all of them but guys like me I only got I have one what I call my good rod which is a it's actually a, a really nice rod it's a Temple Fork Outfitters rod with a pen uh, my pen reel on it I got that rod from Brush Island Outfitters as a birthday gift to me a couple years ago. My brother gave it to me. So yeah, Temple Fork Outfitters. I think they're out of Texas. What's their professional series? Seven foot medium action. Um, and this is a perfect rod for around here, whether you're wade fishing, fishing out of a boat, fishing off a pier. Uh, it's a really good all around rod. I have a... Uh, my pen reel, it's a 360 series uh, that I have on it. I actually brought my reels, like I said earlier, brought those over to Brush Island, dropped them off so uh, my cousin can throw some, some braid on there for me. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little tackle rundown. Uh, like I said earlier, let me know what you use. I'm always down for trying new tackle. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting out on the water here soon. I know. Next weekend, I probably got to work on the boat, get it cleaned up, get it in shape. I got to replace the bilge pump, do a little bit of trailer maintenance on that. But hopefully here soon, in the next few weeks, we'll be getting out on the water, uh, trying to get, get back on some trout and some redfish. So y'all stay tuned for those videos. Like I said earlier, subscribe if you like the videos, give them the thumbs up, uh, and leave some comments. Any feedback helps helps me make better videos in the future and it just gives me an idea of what y'all like seeing and what you don't like seeing and stuff like that anyway guys appreciate y'all watching share these videos with your friends if you think they'll like them and we'll see you on the next one